Ah, Bulls Nation. I know I might make you upset when I say this, but you have to be okay with this. Like you have to actually be satisfied with what happened with uh, today. I know it hurts. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. I'm like just replaying things over my head. It does feel like we let one slip away. I totally agree with that feeling. But you have to understand that the Bulls were 11 point underdogs. Like that's a ridiculous number to be an underdog in a playoff series. They thought that this was going to be a blowout. And we came out even after a, a horrible first five minutes and an absolutely terrible first quarter. The Chicago Bulls made this a game. They won quarters two and three. It was close that we only give up 93 points. I mean, that's fantastic. I have to be proud of that. I have to be happy about that. It just sucks, though, that we only shot 32% from the field and 18% from uh, the, the three-point range. That's what hurts so bad because it just seems like there were so many opportunities for this Bulls team to either take the lead, and then once they got the lead, it seemed that they could extend the lead. Oh, it sucks, but hey, man, this is... The Life of Playoff Basketball. Welcome back to the Slam Duncan YouTube channel. I'm going to be recapping, kind of doing a post-game, a little short post-game show for uh, Bulls versus Bucks. Game 1 of the series. Uh, Bucks took Game 1, so it is 1-0 Milwaukee Bucks, and Game 2 is on Wednesday in Milwaukee, so the Bulls will be running it back on Wednesday. Um, this is just going to be a short little post-game show. I have some fans running in the background, so I apologize about that. Also, no cuts, and I need to do this quickly because I have some homework to do, and I want to watch... The Suns versus uh, Pelicans game, which I have up right, right now. But let's just kind of talk about some of the key things here. First off, the start of the game, the first five minutes, or even just the, we just talked about the first minute, the Bucks got out to a 9 nothing lead, and we're just like, oh, here we go. This is this is how the series is going to go. You saw so many people on Twitter saying, like, oh, this is this is how the series is going to go. The Bulls are going to get blown out. Milwaukee's going to kill in transition. It's This is going to be a series sweep easily. And honestly, man, I was kind of thinking the same way before this season, this series started. I'm like, the, if anything, the Bulls get one maybe, and all the rest of the games, it's probably going to be a blowout. Um, but this showed tonight that the Chicago Bulls can actually win a game against the Milwaukee Bucks, even if they don't play at their best. The Bulls made the Milwaukee Bucks work tonight. They only made, uh, they only put up 93 points. They made Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday struggle from the field. These are two guys that the Milwaukee Bucks went out, or two guys that have been key parts of that championship run last season, uh, specifically Chris Middleton uh, being the second scorer and Drew Holiday being uh, a, that third scorer. Like, they're the ones that are supposed to support Giannis. And while Giannis showed up today with 27 and 16, the others really didn't show up. And if anything, I'm shocked that Giannis didn't even get to 30. But that's a good thing for the Bulls. They made Giannis Antetokounmpo not get to 30 points. That's an absolute win. And I know, he had five fouls, so maybe he probably gets gets to 30 if he didn't have those five fouls. But the, what, the way that the Bulls played Giannis, you understand that you're not going to stop this dude. He hit a transition three to give, to end that 9-0 run to start the game. And if he's doing that, you know, tip your cap. The entire league should just quit. The Bucs are winning the championship. But... You knew that he can't do that all the time. You can't stop this man, but you can actually slow him down. And the Bulls forced him into a lot of perimeter shots, a lot of post fadeaways, a lot of three-point shots. That's good. We did our job against Giannis tonight. Yes, he's still going to get 27. Even when he struggles, he's going to get 27. That's what Giannis does. But we did actually a pretty good job against Giannis tonight, and I, I have to be very pleased about that. Um... The, and the rest of the guys, I mean, this is this. The Bulls did exactly what they had to do. They had to stop the rest of the Milwaukee Bucks team. Stop Chris Middleton. Stop Drew Holiday. And they did that. And that's how you give your chance. You give yourself a chance to win this game. I know it sucks though. This Bulls team was right there. The Bucks, uh, Milwaukee Bucks are struggling from the field. They have 21 turnovers in this game. Giannis has five fouls. Is not having the best of game, but he still has five fouls and he's out of the game for a decent amount of time. The other two all-stars for this Bucks team are struggling from the field. It seems like this is the game to get. And honestly, the Bulls probably should have gotten this game. But I think this just shows you that this Milwaukee Bucks team is the championship, or is, is the uh, reigning champions, and obviously have a lot of experience. And this Bulls team is new to this. They A lot of guys have not played in, in a playoff game like Zach Levine, but even like guys that have played in a playoff game like Nikola Vucevic, they haven't played a lot. 
So uh, a lot of guys out there, I.L., Kobe, P. Will, never been in a playoff game before. Um, and you saw the lack of experience. And I think that was honestly the difference down the stretch. It, it just honestly was. Um, I want to talk quickly about the defense. And then I want to show some stuff in the box scores. Because there, there is some pretty eye-opening things, I'll just say, about the box score here. Um, first off, uh, follow me on Twitter at Duncan underscore white 14. If you really want to catch my in-game analysis on this, but at the start of the game, the Chicago Bulls, they decided to basically switch everything. And this was something that I actually wasn't in favor of because you saw what was happening was the, the Bulls were, were willing to switch everything and that would put like Caruso on Giannis or it would put Nikola Vucevic on Drew Holiday. And what the Bulls were actually trying to do was that they were willing to actually give up the post up, like the initial post up. So if Giannis has like, let's say, Zach Levine or Alex Caruso on him, he would immediately go to the post. And the Bulls actually wanted that. But what you saw was that uh, once that person caught the ball, you saw Caruso or whoever was guarding the bigger man in the post would take away the baseline. So they can't go baseline. And then the strong side defender up near the top of the key um, would come on over and double. And then they would force them actually into the baseline. So you don't give up the baseline initially, but then you come on over and you double uh, whoever it is. And, it was, you know, it's Giannis, it was Middleton, a lot, even Drew Holiday was posting up. It was all these guys. But what this Denton did, what, though, was that it forced the Bucks to throw the ball back out onto the perimeter. And this is where I was upset with the switching because what was starting to happen was you saw, you know, like Vucevic is on a, on a perimeter player. And then once you double that post up, then the rotations happen, but it's putting Vucevic in the rotations. You're putting Vucevic out there to run on the perimeter and guard Drew Holiday, Wesley Matthews, etc. And that's not what I wanted to see. Now, that was the start of the game, though. But the Bulls actually decided to change up that game plan, and they only switched like one through four down the stretch. And I like that. That was a really good adjustment by Billy Donovan because you saw then I, it, you're absolutely willing to switch one through four, even if it is, you know, Zach Levine or like a really small guy on Giannis. If you're able to still double like the way that you were able to do today, you take that because the rotations were pretty much on point today. I can't complain about that either. The rotations, even the guys that don't play defense and DeMar and Zach, they were locked in on the rotations and you saw guys flying everywhere around the court on the rotation. So really good job, good job by the bulls in the rotations. Um, also, a couple other things that I saw that were some adjustments. One was Derek Jones Jr. played a lot, and I think he needs to actually play more. So I'm happy Billy Donovan saw that. Um, we also ran a lineup that was like our small ball lineup, like that lineup that we saw when Vucevic was out with COVID and we faced the LA teams. We ran small and had Derek Jones Jr. at the five. We saw some time with that. I wasn't too happy with uh, the amount of time that they got, but I think that's actually going to be interesting to see if the Bulls can actually utilize that because the Bucks do tend to run big. Um, the only time I consider them small is when Giannis is at the five, and he's obviously humongous, but he's a freak. But when there's Bobby Portis out there or Brooke Lopez out there, you can actually take advantage of this Bucks team by going small and running fast. If you get that ball and run out, those guys like Portis and Brooke Lopez, they can't keep up with, with uh, the smaller lineup. And I think the Bulls... Missed a lot of transition opportunities because, like I said before, 21 turnovers for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bulls only had 11, so good job by them. But 21 turnovers, you need to take advantage. And I thought the Bulls were just playing a little too slow in transition today. I understand that you don't want to turn the ball back over. And I think that might have been what Donovan was thinking today. But I think you need to start thinking of taking advantage of those turnovers. Because the Bulls forced a lot of turnovers today. Um, so... I'm really pleased with this defense. I I, I, get it. I don't like to switch everything, but I like switching one through four. Don't put Vucevic in that situation where he has to guard the perimeter guys. But switching one through four, I can live with that. And it was extremely effective today. We saw Giannis have to throw the ball back out of the post multiple times. We saw Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. They couldn't turn the corner because we were switching pretty effectively. And it didn't matter who was on them, whether it was DeRozan, Levine, or Caruso. It, they, those guys locked up on those guys and they did a fantastic job so i'm really pleased with this defense but to finish this video we need to talk about what the bulls need to do and change for wednesday night's game and i'm happy that it's wednesday because today sunday this was game one bulls have two days off to kind of tweak some things in the game plan and the good thing about today is that this game plan showed that this is a game plan that is effective like this isn't like you came in with a game plan that was ineffective and now you need to scrap the entire thing you keep this game plan. This game plan, especially on defense, was extremely effective today. And that is a good sign for this Bulls team because now you just got to tweak a little bit of things. And 
maybe then you can steal game two in, in Milwaukee because that would be huge. If we steal game two, even though I thought we could have stole this game and game one is usually the game to steal, if we can steal game two and then keep this game plan going and when we get back at home, then it, this becomes a series. Again, I did not think this, the Bulls team had a chance, but seeing this game and seeing how effective the Bulls were, I'm actually starting to think that the Bulls can at least make this a series. I'm not saying they're going to win it. I still don't have them winning the series, but this can be a series. I won't be shocked if this if this actually goes longer than five games, and I'll be very pleased if we somehow get to a game six. So this is good, a really good start right now for the Bulls. But let's look at this right here. I talked about this in my uh, pre uh, preview of the series. I said that the the big, the big three has to show up. Now they did not do that today, and. Like this is what I said earlier in the video that even if the Bulls don't play their best, they still have a chance to beat this team. If one of the big three is has it going, I think the Bulls win this game. So if you're able to lock up again defensively, like how they did today, I know that you're not going to keep Milwaukee to 93 points for every single game. But at the same time, your big three is not going to shoot this poorly. So that might even it out, and who knows then what might be the difference maker in the end. And if we have the big three going. The defense doesn't need to do 93. Try to keep it at 100, but you don't need to do 93. But this was a really good defensive performance. I hope they keep it. But this is what I'm talking about right here. For DeRozan, 6-25. This was awful. Now, it's funny. I'm seeing a lot of people, including Sylvie, who's on ESPN 1000 Chicago, has some things with Sylvie. Got a little Twitter argument with him. But 9-27 um, for 27 for Vucevic. And he's complaining, and he's complaining a lot. But it's funny to me because Vucevic was by far the best player on the offense today. He was the only guy that made nine shots for the Bulls today. I get it. He had a lot of wide open threes he missed. And that killed me. He missed a layup that could have put the game to one point. But at the end of the day, man, he was the only guy that could really score for this Bulls team. So can't be too upset about that, honestly. Um, I know Vucevic has gotten a lot of crap this, this season. And look, man, I'm, I've been criticizing him too. But you have to appreciate what he did today. This was a really good game from Vucevic. I know 9 for 27 is not ideal. But if you're going to be upset about Vucevic's uh, shooting percentage, look at DeRozan. Look at Levine. Right? It, you got to be fair to everybody. The entire big three, I think, shot for 21 for 71 from the field. Or maybe it was 21 for 69. It was bad. It was a bad shooting performance uh, from the big three. And honestly, I mean, you look at the other end for the Bucs, the... Middleton and Holiday, they shot awful too. So maybe it was the week off or whatever, but I don't expect this to happen ever again. Now, I will say for Zach Levine's first ever playoff game, I think he actually did pretty well. A lot of these missed shots were kind of towards the end. Um, but, I mean, he actually was a big part of the Bulls in the second quarter, cutting into that lead, and then a big part of the Bulls uh, getting closer to taking the lead in that third quarter. And he had 18 points and 10 rebounds. Again, the shooting needs to be better. He missed a couple of open threes that he should have definitely made today. Um, but a lot of people are complaining about his lack of driving. I think he drove enough, and people were upset that he missed a layup because Giannis contested it. That's what happens if you drive against his Bucks team. They're not going to give up the pain points. You have Giannis back there. You got Brooke Lopez back there. They're going to contest. It's hard to score in the paint against his Bucks team. So I think... Levine played his absolute butt off defensively. I thought he controlled the game pretty well. Um, and he had a lot of decent moments today. But again, this this needs this needs to get better. And same thing with DeRozan. Like these these shooting percentages is not gonna fly for this series. So uh these guys, the big three, have to put in uh put the uh ba basketball into the bucket. It, it's that simple. And Again, I think that's honestly the, only re the reason why we lost this game. If just one of these guys has it going, I think we win this one. Um, so it's just unfortunate. Uh, the rest of the guys, I can't really talk about too much besides for Caruso. Caruso was fantastic, but he needs to hit his open threes in the corner. That needs to go down. Um, and P. Will needs, just needs to be more aggressive, but I can't complain what they did on the defensive end but from the entire team. The defensive end was very, very good. Now, to finish this, I want to talk about a couple of things. One, um, the Vucevic miss layup at the end that sucked bad it it, it, it hurt i i know but we have to understand that you know you got you got basically what you wanted out of that and you can't really ask for much more he just has to convert i i know it hurts but let's talk about this right here this is something that a lot of people are kind of like upset about that zach took that shot with 29 seconds left but 
I don't have the play brought up here. I might make a video about this later. But people that are upset about that shot, I don't think understood what was really happening. Now, this is, again, my opinion. You have every right to disagree with me on this. But Zach took a three with 29.7 seconds left. And a lot of people were pissed. They're just like, what the hell was that? And I get it. I, To be honest, I wasn't too happy with the shot selection either. But people were saying that Zach took the shot too early. But that's the part I really disagree with. And honestly, this might have been the best shot that Zach could have gotten in that situation. Because DeRozan and Vucevic, they fell down on a defensive possession. The Bulls stole the ball, but DeRozan was down on the ground. Vucevic didn't see the ball initially that it was stolen. And he was still looking for it down on in the backcourt. So the Bulls pushed it. But Milwaukee is one of the best teams in getting back in transition. So once the Bulls got to the front court, it was a 3v5 uh, in Bucks' favor. Bucks had five guys back. The Bulls only had three. And that's the problem. So Zach was actually looking to score quick because he understood that it was you know, we're on a time crunch here. But you can't get to the lane in a 3v5 situation. And then DeRozan and Vucevic didn't get back into the play. And I'm talking about like actually in the play. Like they just hit the free, the three-point line until 50 sec 15 seconds left on the shot clock. But at that point, the game clock was at like 32 seconds-ish. Like it was low. So Zach then was able to get a, actually a pretty decent open look. Donovan even said it was a pretty open look. And he's fine with, with him taking that shot. Um, but again though, if you're the Bulls... You want the two for one in that situation because if you're if you're trying to shoot at, uh, later, like if let's say Zach held on to the ball and waited for everyone else to get in, then it's under 24 seconds at that point, and then you might not even get a shot off uh, at all. Maybe you do. Maybe you do get the shot off, but in my opinion, I'm looking for that two for one situation. I'm looking to see if I can get that shot off and either make it a one point game or tie the game, but have around you know. 30 seconds, 29 seconds left to go in the game because then the Bucks have to take a shot, but then you get the last possession. That's how I was thinking about it, and I was not too upset with Zach taking that shot. Again, it's not the ideal situation. I've said that it wasn't it wasn't what the shot I would have taken. But again, though, you don't get into the lane in that situation. The DeRozan and Vucevic didn't get back to the play until 15 seconds left, and game clock is running. So honestly, that might have been the best shot in that situation. So... I'm not too upset about that. I think Donovan was actually pleased with that. Um, if Zach makes it, then all of a sudden, again, the Bulls, they're tied. The Bucks have to then uh, go down on the other end. And they there's about 28 seconds left, right? So that means that they have to get a shot up and the Bulls will get the last possession. I'd much rather take that than uh, waiting for the rest of the guys to come in. And then potentially at that point, the shot clock's at like 10 or 8. And then hopefully you get a shot off at that point. It probably doesn't go in. I would rather, rather take my chances with what Zach did today um, than wait for the other guys to get into the play and then hopefully get a drive into the lane. That's hard to do, okay? So, again, you have every right to disagree with me on that, but that's just my opinion on that shot that Zach took. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the main guys, the big three, they have to do better. They have to shoot better. You can't shoot whatever it was, a 21 out of 71, a 21 out of 69, whatever it was, from the floor that's inexcusable in the playoffs all right that's all i have for you guys in this video hope you guys enjoyed rough one but we'll be back on wednesday bulls nation um keep your hopes up i i think this can actually be a series after watching this game uh make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next one peace